you're saying that you're going to give up four billion dollars for to avoid a one in seven chance of, of killing an astronaut. You're basically saying that an astronaut's life is worth 28 billion dollars. Hi, I'm Matt Welch from Reason TV, and I'm joined today by Dr. Robert Zubrin. Uh, he is an astronautical engineer and occasional contributor to Reason Magazine, including in our BAFO space issue, Rocket Man, in which he wrote a very popular, controversial article titled, uh, What is an Astronaut's Life Worth? Robert, thank you for joining us. Why do you want to kill astronauts? I don't want to kill astronauts. I, in fact, I want to elevate astronauts from their current status of guinea pigs to their true role, which is as explorers. But if they're going to be explorers, they have to be allowed to explore. For the past four decades, NASA has not gone anywhere new. And I think that a major impairment to astronauts being allowed to do what they want to do, what they need to do, what they should be doing, is a safety culture which has become uh, so risk adverse that it prevents NASA from fulfilling its mission. Given the costs of NASA, which come at the expense of various other things that we could be doing in the money, whether in the public sector or the private sector, that there's an obligation for NASA to deliver the goods here. If you say we shouldn't send astronauts to rescue the Hubble Space Telescope, as former Administrator O'Keefe said, because there's risk involved. Admittedly, a one chance in 50 risk of space shuttle failure, which was their documented failure rate. If you've got a 2% chance of killing seven people, that is probabilistically equivalent to a 14% chance of killing one person. And you're saying that you're going to give up $4 billion to avoid a one in seven chance of, of killing an astronaut. You're basically saying that an astronaut's life is worth $28 billion. If you put this extreme value on the life of an astronaut, you basically make it impossible to do anything. If you say that safety is your number one priority, then you never fly. And you get a space agency which is costing $17 billion a year and accomplishing nothing. And these calculations happen in other areas of government. They know that number. They follow that according to policy, right? Right. People have said, look, we should be spending that money on real social needs. Think of all the lives we could save with $17 billion a year. They have a point. There's always something else you could do. There's an infinite series of expenditures you could do that would marginally increase the chances of the astronauts. But if you do that, you never fly and you spend an infinite amount of money to have a space program that accomplishes nothing. And you do this at the expense of all these other human needs that could indeed be met. It's one thing, you know, to spend $4 billion a year on a shuttle program that does X, Y, and Z. It's another thing to spend $4 billion a year on a manned spaceflight program, or currently $10 billion a year on a manned spaceflight program that doesn't even launch anyone. <laughs> okay, the amount of money that we are spending on NASA could indeed be used for other purposes, you name it, and therefore they have a responsibility to perform with that money. If they are not doing that, then what we're basically doing is setting at naught not only NASA's mission, but all those other human needs. It's saying all those lives that we could save with that NASA money, we don't care about them, we're willing to waste it doing nothing. And all the great goals that NASA should have, opening Mars to humanity, that counts for nothing because we're willing to spend the money but not do the mission. The mission needs to come first. And on that uh, note, we'll uh, close here. For uh, Reason TV, I am Matt Welch.